All right, hello. I'm Shreya, and my mentor this summer was Dr. Ochoa, and the project I worked on was understanding electron transport through phosphorus atoms embedded in silicon. Um, so transport at this nanoscale is very different from that at the macro scale because we're confining the region through which electrons can move to be very, very small, in this case, one or two atoms, but control at this scale has um, applications in semiconductor materials, transistors, and quantum computing. And here's a picture of the experimental system. There's three main regions of this transport. There's the central region, which, depending on which system we're investigating, has either one or two phosphorus atoms, the source electrode, which is connected to the central region with metal leads on one side, and the drain electrode connected in the same way on the opposite side. And we investigate the journey of an electron as it tunnels from the source into the central region and the central region into the drain. The gate electrodes pictured here are far enough apart from the central region and positioned in such a way that they have only a localized effect, increasing the energy of an electron only once it enters the central region or decreasing the energy. So here is the uh, picture of the one atom and the two atom system and the rectangles correlate to the source and drain electrodes as an atom, as an electron is tunneling from the source electrode into the atom, it encounters a potential barrier and has some probability of being transmitted through this barrier and another of being reflected. And this potential barrier is what allows us to treat this atom as a box in which electrons of only particular energies can exist. And we see this in the stepwise nature of the current. However, if we increase the coupling strength, which is the strength of connection between these electrodes in the central region too much, this barrier decreases and eventually disappears. Electrons of any energy can exist within the atom and the current function becomes continuous. So the transmission function is dependent both on this coupling strength and the gate voltage mentioned previously. And the transmission function is the distribution of energy levels within the atom that electrons can occupy. So an increase in coupling strength correlates to a broadening of this transmission function peak here pictured on the bottom right. And then the Landauer model for, uh, equation for current which we used to investigate the experimental systems comprise not only of this transmission function, but also of the Fermi direct distribution and source and drain electrodes, which is the equilibrium energy distri distribution of electrons um, within the metal. And so the current takes into consideration the properties of all three regions and the connections between them. But what we're interested in is not the current, but more specifically the differential conductance. This is the derivative of the current with respect to the source drain bias. We see how this parameter changes as a function, or this value changes as a function of our model parameters. And then we determine whether we can use the Landauer model to better understand one and two uh, phosphorus atom systems. So this diagram shows the connection between the experimental setup, source drain gate potentials, the profile that we get from plotting differential conductance as a function of these two potentials, and the atomic energy levels which are open for transport. The diamond structure arises from the fact that there are two discrete energy levels in the phosphorus atoms that can be occupied by electrons. And this picture on the bottom right shows how when we only increase the, uh, change the gate voltage, keeping the source drain voltage constant, the peaks in differential conductance result from atomic energy level transitions. So the current is dependent on which atomic energy levels are open for transport, and this is reflected in diamond width, height, and position. So to investigate the one atom system, we observe this differential conductance profile as a function of the two potentials and see how it changes as we change different parameters, such as the lever arm. The lever arm can magnify the effect of the gate voltage in increasing energy levels of electrons within the atom, the coupling strength, and the energy spacing, which in our model correlates to the Coulomb repulsion felt by one electron uh, due to another as it goes through the atom. And so here is shown the linear effect that increasing the lever arm has on the width of the diamonds. In general, the effect of these parameters on our diamond profile uh, in the model aligns with what we'd expect to see based on the role of the parameter in the experimental system. When exploring the two atom system, we investigate many of the same uh, parameters is in the one atom system, but the new parameter which we introduce is tunneling, and tunneling is effectively a coupling strength, but rather than that between the source strain electrodes and the central region, it's a coupling strength between the, the two atoms themselves, and more specifically between the atomic energy levels within the atoms. So here we see with low tunneling, this profile resembles a one impurity system. As we increase tunneling, we're able to manipulate the size of these diamond regions. So with this understanding of how the uh, uh, model parameter space affects the diamond profile, we try to replicate experimental figures. For the one atom system, we start with all the same experimental parameters. And the only thing we have to modify is the Fermi energy. This is very promising for the Landauer model because the Fermi energy is a characteristic of the 
uh, metal weeds, which is very variable amongst different experimental systems. In the two impurity system, we start with many of the same parameters as in the one atom system, and we have the energy spacing and introduce two new tunneling parameters. So this helps us understand how the introduction of another atom affects the Coulomb propulsion and also how the two uh, different energy levels within the two atoms uh, couple to different extents. So the Landauer model does provide us with a deeper understanding of how the system works and how these systems work. And we're also able to explore these regions of stability or these diamonds, um, and that gives rise to more interesting questions. So future steps would be in involved investigating these and also looking into improving numerical fitting and uh, looking into more of these bullets listed here. So thank you very much for your time.